We wish you a Merry Christmas. Okay. <clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Duke and welcome back to a Christmas themed episode of Ask Us Anything or Awuwa, where we gather your questions from the internet and answer them. In today's episode, we find out why some Maxis users can already access DNB's 5G network despite Maxis not signing on yet, some phones with small screen sizes, and if there's an Android smartwatch with ECG. Sophie, cue the intro. Wait, before we continue with the video, I have an important announcement to make. Surgeon Joe is hiring! We are looking for driven, like-minded individuals to join our growing team. But wait, you might be wondering, why would I want to work here? Well, let me show you. You get to work here with some of the most incredible creatives. You get access to incredible studios like this and all of this cool equipment. I'm trying to work here. Can you get out of here? What the? You also get free parking. Wait, get out of the way. So, are you interested? Hit the link below to see what positions we have available. Going right into the first question for this episode, I was thinking Maxis had not yet signed any agreement with DNB, but I'm literally connecting to a 5G signal right now in Malacca. Yes, as of right now, Maxis has yet to sign an agreement with DNB to use the 5G network. Maxis aims to complete the approval process by January 2023 and to commercially launch 5G related products and services soon after. The telco added that further announcements with more details will be provided in due course. You can read the full article on our website with the link in the description. But coming back to your comment that you can already connect to a 5G network on Maxis, you're not alone as many other Maxis users shared a similar experience on social media. The most sensible explanation would be that Maxis might be performing a friendly user trial or FUT with selected customers. These trials are typically done to assess the network on the merit of performance, stability and reliability. Data from the trial will be used to iron out any kinks, bugs and underlying issues before the official launch. Cellcom did something similar with its customers back in September of 2022 before its official 5G mobile plan launch. At the moment, you can access the 5G network through Cellcom, Telecom Malaysia, DG, U-Mobile and YTL Communications Yes 5G. Moving on to the next question. Any good phones with a smaller screen size? There are some people who prefer smaller screen phones for their compact form factor allowing for easier usability, especially with one hand. Besides that, they are more easily pocketable. However, you should take note that a compact size does not leave much room for a large battery. For Android, ideally, it would be the Asus Zenfone 9 with its relatively small 5.9-inch OLED display with a refresh rate up to 120Hz. It's also no slouch, packing a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 with up to 256GB of storage and up to 16GB of RAM. However, it's not officially sold here in Malaysia. Bummer. So, the next best phone would be the Samsung Galaxy S22 with a 6.1-inch Dynamic AMOLED 2X and a 120Hz refresh rate. Inside, there's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 paired with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. Powering the device is a 3700mAh battery that supports up to 25W fast charging with a compatible charger. The Galaxy S22 is currently on sale for 3299 ringgit on Samsung Malaysia's eStore. Now, despite having the same screen size as the Samsung Galaxy S22, Sony has managed to provide the Xperia 5 Mark IV with a 5000mAh battery. Up front, you get a 6.1-inch OLED with a 120Hz refresh rate and is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 paired with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. Unlike the Galaxy, the Sony features expandable storage via a microSD card of up to 1TB. However, these features come at a premium as the phone costs 4,499 ringgit. That said, the Galaxy S22 will receive 4 years of major OS updates and 5 years of security updates, making it the more value buy. If you're not into the whole Android master race, then you can check out the Apple iPhone 13 mini. Featuring a compact 5.4-inch Super Retina XDR display, 
It is one of the smallest phones you can buy today and is powered by Apple's A15 Bionic SoC. There are three storage options to choose from, starting from 128GB for Rs3,199 to 156GB for Rs3,699 and 512GB for Rs4,699. The final question for this episode reads, Is there an Android equivalent to ECG on the smartwatch? Well, you have the Galaxy Watch 5 and 5 Pro, Galaxy Watch 4 and 4 Classic, Huawei Watch GT3 Pro and Huawei Watch D to name a few. However, only the ECG app on the Huawei Watch D is listed as a registered medical device under the Medical Device Authority or MDA, a regulatory body under the Ministry of Health. Furthermore, the Huawei Watch D also features a blood pressure monitoring system using a dual-layer airbag embedded in the watch strap which is inflated by a mini pump that has a maximum pressure of 40 kPa. This feature has also been successfully registered with the MDA. The Watch D is available for pre-order from the December 12th to the 23rd and is priced at 1,999 ringgit. Samsung on the other hand also received approval for its blood pressure monitoring app on the Galaxy Watch 4 and Watch 5 series. It's only a matter of time before a software update is pushed out to enable this feature. Now, unlike Huawei, Samsung's implementation of the blood pressure monitoring system uses a simpler pulse wave analysis via the heart rate sensor. Well, that concludes our episode for today. Remember to like our video if you liked it and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok to get the latest news on almost everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I will catch you guys in the next Awoo! Bye!